on I think you. I think brother made a very wonderful suggestion because these activist voices are slowly being silenced and made to think that the Reverend Jackson or Reverend Sharpton or the civil rights movement is now irrelevant. And that is as far away from the truth as the far planet Pluto is away from the sun. And I think mm -hmm. it's four billion six hundred million miles away. And they've said it's not even a planet anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, they that's say. Right. Yeah. But now uh, to answer your question, mm -hmm. You know, our brother has a commitment to us, but it will only be as strong as we are in pressing the issues that ill affect our community. The way we can help him is to go with him to him with a comprehensive plan that he could see in it the help that would come to him by our work in our own community to rebuild it. There's a scripture in the Bible that reads in the book of Isaiah, and they will rebuild the wasted cities. Who is the they? And who is the w lives in the wasted part of America's cities? It is we. And if we come up with the constructive plan that and put together some of the money that we throw away and then get some of the stimulus money that we hope to bring back into our communities, we can rebuild or help to rebuild the wasted cities. I will close on that point with this. When President Obama president-elect at that time, was traveling from Philadelphia to Washington to, um, I think he made a speech maybe in Baltimore and then went on to Washington. But CNN was on that train with him and they were showing worldwide the blight of the towns that the train went through from Philadelphia to Washington. And the reporter from CNN was just shocked that it looked that bad and the world was seeing the blight of the cities of America where the black, the Hispanic, and the poor whites live. So, uh, brother, we have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. We can press the president, but I'll tell you, the best place to put the full press is on ourselves. And lastly, about Darfur, I would ask America and the world to stay out of it because they have ulterior motives. I have been going in and out of, uh, of Sudan for over 25 years. And I know that the fight or the war that went on between the North and the South and the willingness of outside forces to try to separate the South from the North was because in the South there was oil. But there was a legitimate grievance between the, 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 the brothers and sisters living in the South and the brothers and sisters that live in the North. Most of those in the North look just like we do. They're all black but they are Muslims and they speak Arabic. In the southern part, there are Muslims, Christians, and animists. So the outside forces manipulated the legitimate grievance of the brothers and sisters in the south against the government in the north to try to force a separation where they could get access to the oil. I was on a peace mission, which I don't talk about much, in uh, that area of the world between John Garang, who led the opposition in the South, and Bashir, uh, Omar Bashir, who was president in, in the North, and uh, President Museveni of Uganda, and also Arab Moy of Kenya. 
Well, I'm saying that to say this. America, when they learned that I was involved in the peace discussions and was making headway, I think it was Madeleine Albright and them that asked that the Muslims, Farrakhan uh, and Akbar, who was with me, be taken out of that mix. After John Garang and the North finally settled their grievance, it broke out now in the West. And why in the West? There's oil in the West. And so the, there's manipulation of genuine problems in the West, but that manipulation is from outside forces. If the African Union and the soldiers are, that are a part of the African Union and ECOWAS are left alone, I believe they can help to solve the problem of Defour. And lastly, the International Criminal Court has indicted President Omar al-Bashir, but it's interesting that with the slaughter that went on in Lebanon and in Gaza, nobody is indicting them. And with the slaughter that uh, President George W. Bush initiated in Iraq on the basis of a lie, there is no warrant for his arrest. But a black man and, uh, who is an Arab and a Muslim is now charged, indicted before the International Criminal Court. And the Muslim world has rejected the UN or uh, the ICC uh, charges. So Bashir has been moving about in the Islamic world. And on the news yesterday, you might have seen that he was at a conference in uh, Doha in Qatar. And he was hugged and kissed by many of his Arab brothers who are so-called friends of America. And people wonder, well, why would the friends of America hug Omar Bashir? Because they know the root of the problem and they know it is not what the Western media has projected. We must be careful about how our emotions are triggered by people who really, if you pardon my expression, don't give a damn about black suffering and the loss of black life. If they did, they'd be concerned about what's happening to the Palestinians. Very good, and a good question, Earl. Thank you. And by the way, whatever you missed, you can watch the webcast on Sunday, 10 a.m. Chicago time at www.noy.org, nationofislam.org. Okay, we'll be back with more with Minister Louis Farrakhan. I'm Cliff Kelly. This is the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. More with Cliff Kelly, the governor of Talk Radio. Your phone calls, traffic and weather, and more.